Good evening, everyone. My name is Bobby Saperstein, and as Director of Programming and Strategy for the Jewish Democratic Council of America, JDCA, I want to welcome you all to today's Georgia runoff phone bank in support of Senator Raphael Warnock. With your support, JDCA has been working to ensure wins for Democrats throughout the 2022 midterm elections, with 80 of our endorsees having won their elections, and hopefully we are just one way, week away from that number climbing to 81. Mm. With the runoff in full swing, things have certainly been heating up. In fact, yesterday, Georgia broke the record for the most ballots cast in a single day during early voting, with more than 300,000 ballots cast. Tonight, we are delighted to be hearing from Representative Lucy McBath, who was recently re-elected to Congress, this time to represent Georgia's seventh congressional district having, after previously representing the Georgia sixth. And then we'll phone bank away. But first, I'd like to share with you our latest ad for Senator Warnock, featuring two of our guests this evening, Sherry Frank and Alexis Scott. Sherry Frank is a Jewish and interfaith community leader who has served as executive director of the American Jewish Committee's Atlanta chapter for 25 years and on the national board of NCJW. And you've helped found Georgia's very own congregation, Or Hadash. Alexis Scott is a leader in the Black community and a journalist. She's been recognized for her work diversifying the media industry in Atlanta and running the ADW, the nation's first Black-owned daily newspaper, which was founded by her grandfather, William A. Scott II, in 1928. I'll now play our ad. As a Jewish Georgian, I support Raphael Warnock for his faith, honesty, and devotion to democracy. Herschel Walker's dishonesty and hypocrisy should be a deal breaker for all Georgians. Herschel Walker would not only be an embarrassment to Georgia, he would be a danger to democracy, and he doesn't respect the truth. Vote for Raphael Warnock. For decency, freedom, and democracy. Our communities stand together on this. Yeah. Introduce tonight's guests. I'm delighted to welcome Sherry Frank and Alexis Scott. Sherry, over to you. I'm Sherry Frank, and as a proud Democrat and a proud Georgian, I am honored to introduce Congresswoman Lucy McBath, ready to serve her third term. Representative McBath was reelected for this important third term and has represented Georgia so well. She's well known as an advocate for gun control and public safety. Following the tragic loss of her son to gun violence in 2012, she has continued to be an advocate working tirelessly in Congress to pass red flag laws, universal background checks, and raise the age to purchase a firearm to 21. I am grateful for Representative McBath's tenacity as she defends against Republican extremism to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and violent individuals. Alexis, it's yours. Thanks, Sherry. I'm Alexis Scott, and I'm proud to be here with you this evening. In addition to her work fighting for gun control legislation, Representative Macbeth has worked tirelessly to help Georgia's on other issues. She's voted to raise the minimum wage for Georgia, cut taxes for the middle class, expand the Affordable Care Act, and expand Medicare eligibility to those 55 and over. In addition, Representative Macbeth supports access to abortion care. That includes the right to bodily autonomy for all Americans. Representative Macbeth, thank you so much for doing what you do for Georgia and our country. I'm now delighted to welcome JDCA CEO, Haley Sulfur, who will lead today's conversation with the Congresswoman. Thank you, take it away, Haley. Thank you so much, Sherry and Alexis, and thank you to Congresswoman McBath for joining us. Uh, I'll just start by saying that we are so proud of that ad and so grateful to Sherry and Alexis for lending their voice and their views and their leadership in this important mo moment for, for Georgia uh, and for our country and for Democrats. Um, you know, Congresswoman McBath, one of the uh, one of the 
the themes of this ad is the deep and abiding ties between the Jewish and Black communities, uh, not just in Georgia, but nationally, but certainly Sherry and Alexis represent uh, the views of Georgians. And if you could speak to, I know you have led on this issue as well, if you could speak to the importance of those ties in your state of Georgia. Well, absolutely. And I do have to say the commercial was amazing. And it's so important, I think, especially particularly now for communities to show unity uh, and one, one voice for democracy and, and the voice that we're standing up for uh, and that we're hoping to be able to advocate for is Senator Warnock. So I'm, this is a beautiful advertisement and I'm really excited to see it um, really be shared all over Georgia. But it's absolutely critical at this time that our two communities continue to share our values, politically, uh, society, uh, society values. I mean, all of those kinds of values that we try to instill within our, our generations, uh, past generations, future generations. It's more important now than ever that we advocate for those kinds of values of human decency, uh, making sure that people are able to live in our communities uh, with uh, shared values of peace and, and nonviolence and making sure that we're protecting the least of these, making sure that our people all have access to affordable health care and that our children are educated and that we care for our elderly and we care for our veterans. And I know that our shared communities have uh, these kinds of values. It's more important now than ever that we stand on the front lines because democracy truly as is at stake and because our communities have had our share of um, difficulty. Uh, I'll say it that way. Um, I think no one knows better than our two communities what it will take for us to make sure that democracy still stands. Thank you so much. I will say that the future of democracy was the leading issue for Jewish voters in this election. And we know that that as a priority was shared by so many Americans. Um, if you could reflect a, a, for a bit about the biggest takeaways from these midterm elections, uh, and we will congratulate you once again on your win in a new district. Uh, it wasn't easy, we know. Uh, we were proud to support you, and uh, we are grateful that so many people showed up to support Democrats in this election. But what are some of the, the takeaways from the midterms, maybe that we can apply toward the runoff in a week? Well, I think some of the biggest takeaways are, you know, we were able to reach voters that had been disenfranchised in the past. And so for every, you know, additional voter that we were able to reach, you know, we've been able to have the opportunity to touch them through their hearts and their minds and, you know, pour that spirit of truth that we need more now than ever in America, that spirit of truth uh, we've been able to, been able to, uh, I guess, infuse that in people's spirits in a way that they really recognized how important it was that they take part in advocating for what's important to them, uh, important to their families and their communities, and that is done by exercising the right to vote. And I think that we have been able to do that in ways that in numbers. Uh, with uh, people that were voting in ways that we've never seen, you know, in, in past years. And so I think that in all of the opportunities that other individuals have had to try to drag us down and prevent us from having access to the voting box, uh, you know, we have stood on the front lines and we just decided that we couldn't afford any longer not to be engaged and that we had a responsibility to stand up to protect our right to vote, to protect our right to advocate for ourselves what's important to us and our future generations. And I th don't think we've seen that in a while. Um, you know, our elections are so crucial because they are our opportunities to voice our priorities and cast a light over the issues um, that our nation um, faces every single day. And we were able to do that in these elections. And I think people have been awakened uh, they're, they've been awakened and they recognize that their vote truly does count and that we have to stay vigilant in making sure that we uh, vote every election, not just general elections, but our runoff elections, our primary elections, because elections truly do matter. 
Absolutely. Uh, and speaking of an awakening, um, early voting, as Bobby mentioned, is breaking records uh, this year in Georgia. Yesterday alone, a record was set for having the most ballots cast in one day during early voting with more than 301,000 ballots cast. So to what do you attribute this enthusiasm for voting in this runoff less than a month after uh, after Georgians just voted in the general election? Well, I know that people are very busy with their own endeavors, you know, and everyone has a busy life, but I'm so encouraged because I think folks all across the nation, but in particular in Georgia, you know, we've mobilized and we've been encouraged to mobilize and to, uh, you know, engage people that have not been engaged in, 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 in elections for some time for whatever reasons. And I, we've mobilized and it's just um, been really exciting because people are really believing now that their voice matters and that they can take part in democracy. Uh, they've seen with, you know, President Biden and Vice President Harris and all of the elected officials that we've been able to place in office and the good things that we've been able to do in Congress recently, um, because we have elected officials that truly do care and truly are working on behalf of the American public. I think people now recognize that, that, that their voice really carries a lot of weight at the polls. And so I think people have just understood that time is of the essence. Uh, democracy, we're standing on the precipice of either, you know, dismantling just democracy or being able to continue to build upon what America uh, has done um, for, you know, this nation, for, for immigrants, for, and because we're all immigrants when you think about it. But I just think people recognize this is our country this is our nation and we love this country and we have a responsibility to stand up and protect and preserve what um, foundation has been built by generations before. Thank you. Uh, I know that you are on your way from the airport. So I'll have one more question. And sure. after, uh, after uh, you leave us, we will start calling into your state of Georgia. Many of, many of those on the call today are, are actually from Georgia and we're grateful. But we're going to be doing something that you have done uh, for, I guess, the past uh, six years, which is engage with voters. And, and what are some, uh, some messages, some lessons that you could leave us with in terms of uh, what, what helps uh, when you're speaking with a voter in terms of motivating them and speaking about what issues matter the most uh, to uh, American voters? Well, I think listening to what people's concerns are and being able to identify the policies that this administration, the policies the Democratic Party have and the work that we've done to really make their lives better. Um, I just think bringing you know, truth to power, you, know, you have to be able to speak the truth about what the Democratic Party has done for this country. Encourage people to be um, excited about what we've accomplished and so much more that we're going to be able to do if they are willing to exercise the right to vote. Uh, I know that people are busy, um, but we have to encourage them to just be diligent and involved and excited about their vote. Uh, I always try to, when I'm speaking to people, I always try to identify what is it that we have in common that I can speak to them about. Is it healthcare? I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor. Let's talk about healthcare. Or you know, as a gun violence uh, victim, Let's talk about gun safety. You know, what is it that you can identify with that individual to help encourage them, speak truth to power, talk about the policies that the Democrats have passed, talk about the work that we've done, talk about the work that Senator Warnock has done to this point. Let people know who he is because you are the face of the Democratic Party at that moment. You are the face of the Democratic Party and you are the face um, for Senator Warnock. So just be excited about who he is and what he's accomplished and let people know that having him in the Senate truly, truly, truly matters for the nation. 
Well, thank you, Congresswoman. Having you in the House matters to the nation as well. And I remember seeing you come down the, the steps of the Capitol, I think it was in February of 2019. I happened to be with our Georgia-based board member, Michael Rosenzweig at the time, right after the then Democratic controlled House, it was, it was a very new concept at that point, passed gun legislation, gun safety legislation. It was so meaningful to be with you at that moment. And uh, thank you for your leadership on that and so many other issues that we care so deeply about. Well, thank you so much. I just wanna personally thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing for Senator Warnock. Thank you for what you're doing for Georgia politics. It truly does matter. And we couldn't be winning these races. We could not do the work that we're doing without your committed support. Thank you. I also want to once again thank Alexis and Sherry for doing exactly what the Congresswoman said, speaking truth to power in that ad. We're grateful. With that, I will now turn it over to our outreach director, Ben Cantor, who's going to lead us in our phone bank training so we can get to the work uh, of calling voters because we only have seven days left till it's actually seven days and a few hours until the polls close. <laughs> so let's get to work. Okay, Ben. Thank awesome. You. 